Welcome to another episode of Second Sun Woodworks. My name is Caleb, and I'm going to be talking about a few different things, including uh, squaring up a board using only a block plane, a hand plane, hand powered plane, and then also I'm going to be talking about um, continuous grain around a box and what that means, how that works, and how I did it. So stay tuned. You may remember about a month ago I posted a video of me building a memory slash lock box uh, that was a prototype for another box. This is the box that, uh, the final box that I'm building right now, so this one will have continuous grain. So to start off I got this piece of walnut and I made sure to have uh, the correct length for the entire box, so the four different pieces that will make up the four outer walls. Kind of found the side of the piece that uh, was most square and then set it on that side, flipped it over and clamped it to my workbench. Uh, and then I drew a couple pencil marks uh, before I started hand planing away with my bench dog hand plane. Um, and this was to uh, try to flatten one side of the board. This is a good option for those of you like myself who only have a six inch wide joiner. Uh, usually when you're squaring up a board like this, you want to start it on your joiner, square up one side, and then you can flip it over and you can square up the other side um, in your planer, which I will end up doing later on. But like I said, uh, I don't have that size of a joiner, so this is a good option. Um, you just want to make sure to take off a, a decent amount of the top or the face that you are trying to plane down, um, and then you'll want to uh, make sure it's square. You'll want to make sure that your planer that you're using is really sharp um, and that it's set correctly, uh, or the blade is set correctly inside the planer, else you're not going to have very good results. There's a link above for a little video on how to do some sharpening for these uh, blades. For whatever reason, I keep calling this a planer, but it really is just called a plane. Since I do have a small bench top joiner, it's a Foxtrot uh, bench top joiner, one of the first tools that I actually ever bought and it was kind of a, probably not the best purchase, I didn't really um, know exactly what I was doing at the time, but uh, nevertheless I still have that tool and it's a really great tool and uh, it is still useful for um, squaring up the sides of boards, uh, like in the case of this uh, piece that I'll be using for the box. And so I pulled the joiner out and I made sure that it was square before running one side or one um, side face of the board uh, through to square up one of the sides. And then this way it ensures when I go back later to my miter saw and cut the four different pieces uh, that the one side is square with those cuts. You will also want to make sure that the face that is on the back fence, I don't know if that's exactly what you call it, but the back fence of the joiner is the face that you uh, plane down with your hand planer so that uh, it is completely flat and then that will ensure that the face that's actually going through the joiner becomes square. Then like I said it's a good idea to check the two faces that you squared up uh, with a square and uh, if the whole process was successful then you should have a uh, square fit for um, those two faces. So the face that's on the top is the one that I planed down with my hand plane and then the one on the side is the one that I sent through the joiner. This is really satisfying when it <laughs> comes out straight. Then after that I can run the board through my bench top DeWalt planer. This is a 12 and a half inch planer but when I ran it through I made sure to put the face down that I uh, planed out with my hand plane uh, so that when it runs through it's flat and then it can plane down the the surface that's turned up. Then like I said you can use the straight edge that you straighten with the joiner up against the miter fence when you do the different cuts with your miter saw so that they're square with the edge. Um, so I went ahead and did that. I took it over to my miter saw to cut the four different pieces but in order to get the continuous grain for the box the trick is is that you need to cut the pieces uh, one at a time as if you're moving from one side of the box all the way around the box for those four different walls. And so in order to have the seam that is not actually lining up the grain on the back side of the box, I started on the left wall. So I cut that first piece uh, which was 12 inches long. Um, and that first piece will be the piece that's, if you're looking at the box, it's on the left hand side. Uh, and then I moved from that piece 
to the piece that would be the front of the box and cut that which uh, was 16 inches long and then I went from that piece to the piece on the right hand side of the box which was then again uh, 12 inches long and then I did the back piece uh, at 16 inches long but I made sure to cut them in this sequence down the board so that when I come back and do the miters which I'm going to do on my table saw um, the front face will the grain will line up because I did from uh, you know that side the piece on the left and then I did the piece in the front and the piece on the right and then the piece on the back and so that you get that continuous grain and you'll see a little bit more of what that means here in just a second it's really important when you are cutting these pieces that you make sure that the two 12 inch pieces and the two 16 inch pieces or however long the pieces are that they're the same size uh, so that the square the box uh, actually goes together after you put or after you cut the different 45 degree miters which like I said I'll do here in a second on my table saw you can see here that I'm taking off one edge of one of the 12 inch pieces to make sure that they are the exact same size now you can see here that when I line up the four different pieces uh, of wood that the grain lines up and that's because I have a 12 inch and then a 16 inch and then a 12 inch and then another 16 inch piece um, and then I will be cutting the miters on what I guess would be the back side uh, of these four pieces so that the whole box can fold together and in order to ensure that I cut the miters on the right face and facing the right way what I did is I went to each seam and I drew a little arrow um, pointing in to the seam where it would be folding uh, and then I made sure to do the 45 degree uh, miter on that back side uh, uh, so that both of the miters were facing uh, toward the center of the board on that one side so that when I fold the box together uh, it fits. I have really been wanting to build another workbench for my table saw <laughs> so I have some outfeed support. The one that I used to have is gone and it makes me sad. But you can see here that I went ahead and set the uh, blade at a 45 degree angle, checked it with a speed square, uh, and then like I said I came back to these four different pieces and I drew arrows on each of the seams um, toward the seam. Um, and this is just a way to help me remember which side uh, that I needed to cut those 45 degree angles. And I, when I run these through my table saw, uh, I just use the little um, slider stick that's provided with the DeWalt table saw. It's nothing fancy and it's definitely not perfect. Um, it might be a good idea for those of you out there to build some sort of uh, sled that you can use. It'll be a bit more um, efficient, but this does work. And I made sure to just take off a tiny bit on the edge. Uh, but before doing that, I went ahead and ran a piece of plywood through uh, so that I could check and make sure that the 45 degree angles were correct and that when I line them up um, and check them with a speed square that it is square. This is a, an important thing to do, especially if you just set your blade uh, to 45 degrees because you want to make sure that it's set correct before you go and start chopping up all that, that, uh, that good wood. Once I knew that the blade was set at the right height, I went ahead and uh, took the first piece of walnut, made sure that I was cutting the seam at the right spot. Um, I did this one on the wrong side the first time, but in terms of the easiest way, it still worked out. Um, but the other four cuts I ended up doing on the other side of the saw. Um, but nevertheless, you just want to take off a tiny bit uh, of the wood so that you maintain that grain that will be on the exterior of the box uh, and you get that continuous grain look and so that it actually lines up and it looks like the flow of the grain moves from one side of the box all the way around. Cutting just right of the or just to the to the side of the length of the board is super important because you don't really want to change the length of the board in any way you just want to cut the 45 degree angle uh, so that the box still goes together square. This is really essential. It's important to really hold your hand on the miter gauge that you're sliding uh, through your table saw really firm and are, you know have a good grasp on it as you push these these different pieces to get that miter. Now I'm not a professional. I'm, I'm learning uh, every day I get in the shop I'm learning something new 
and I'm sure a lot of people are going to say that I should just make myself a sled so that this is a bit more accurate and you are probably correct and I hope to eventually do that but um, because I don't have uh, that great of outfit support um, and or uh, a place or a really big top on my table saw I just decided to use the uh, the miter gauge that is supplied. Also for whatever reason I really like to be able to use the tools that I have without having to get more tools uh, at least at this point in my woodworking uh, hobby life. I think when I first started woodworking I spent a lot of time just buying tools and buying new things and not spending the time learning uh, how to use what I have and I think that's super important and, and it saves you money in the end. <laughs> but as you can see here I went ahead and tested out the fit for the box using uh, a Bessie strap clamp to kind of hold everything together and then that way I can actually see if the miters are all fitting together correctly uh, and you'll see here in a second that I end up actually uh, taking one of the pieces and taking off just a little bit more on the table saw so that it fits better. This is important, test things out before you do the gluing. Alrighty folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode here on my YouTube channel. My name is Caleb, this is Second Sun Woodworks. Hopefully you learned a little bit about continuous grain and squaring up a piece of wood. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that. Like, comment, and like I always say, get in the shop, build something cool. Take care.